Who hurt you? Yo, yes. negging. <laughs> negging hurt me. Negging hurt me when I walked in and was like, hmm, George smells so much better than you ever will. It's like, what? It's I mean, true. What if it's, it's true? What if it it's just true? Sarah thought I smelled good. I thought you what's did up, smell Sarah? good. Yeah, what's, what's up, up Sarah? Sarah? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, yo, because Tarant, for those of you who are listening on iTunes, like, Tarant doesn't have a chair today. So, like, not only is he standing in the mic, but he's holding it like he's, like, hosting a Yo, yeah. yo, 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 we are in here. So the concept is, the concept is, concept is, uh, Negging, you, you actually do give expert advice uh, mm-hmm. and counsel people yeah. as a therapist. How do you deal with people's problems that aren't your own? Because I would be like, get a job. Like I would, I would have the worst advice. Well, I like to meet clients where they're at. So I don't try to impose my own views or like act that I know everything. I try to really get to know them and what they're dealing with and really empathize with them. But so relationships empathy. are my specialty. And okay. what's your biggest challenge when you first talk to these clients to get them to open up? Um, it's not so much a challenge. I really focus on that therapeutic relationship. I'm just, mm-hmm. we're two humans. Let's get to know each other. And then from then on, we just... It's like building way. the trust. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's what Tron did. He built my trust, but instead of help me, he hurt me. Oh, See? Get over it, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, okay, so so there you are. You're you're giving advice to people in need. And what's the number one thing you find is most needed in relationships? Like open communication, connection, and that effort. I feel like so it's not good it. dick. Okay, so my <laughs> see, I would just be really bad at this job. No, this this job is very. And you know, I want to applaud you for what you do. Thank you. Because I believe that therapists are undercredited. For it's not just a profession. Mm-hmm. You have to have an innate care for others and empathy, which Tehran naturally lacks, and you have as a gift. And I want to applaud you for going out there and making a change in a positive impact in people's lives. Mm-hmm. And you should be very proud about thank the work you. that you do. Thank you so much. It's nice to hear That's that. That's great. Thank Is you. good dick ever an answer <laughs> to like someone's problem? Tehran, like, I'm, not okay. I'm just that. asking questions. And, and I do I'm believe that if there were more of her out there, there would be less crime. There would be mm-hmm. less disarray in society. So thank you. Thank you. Unfortunately, so much. Uh, toxic masculinity has made me think good dick is the answer to everything. So mm-hmm. on the other side, the business mo- owner may a have a different owner. opinion. Yeah, she might have a different opinion. So what kind of business do you own? Um, I actually just launched a organic underwear line made completely out of bamboo. So very soft, antibacterial. That renewable. sounds like it itches. Yo, <laughs> yo it feels no, like no. Ah, no. Let, me say, ah, let me say something. Bamboo crotch? And like, I'm, yo. I'm going to share too much information on air, but that's what I do anyway. Go for it. So what I do is I don't do laundry. When I run out of boxers. Yeah, I go, so much for that good smell. I go to Ross because I smell new. I yeah. buy new boxers yeah, from I Ross because they're we affordable. Do, we do that. They're affordable. That's something. And what I noticed... Boxer briefs, though. You wear boxers? boxers? I wear boxer briefs now because okay. you made fun of me. Yeah, boxers so, are... Okay. No this is guy what should wear boxers. I boxer wore those, briefs. like, those sweat-proof boxers. Mm-hmm. You know amazing. what I'm talking about? The Under Armour? Might be amazing for you. I love those. But for me, they gave my skin a reaction. Really? And I got red from using them. So, so I think there is definitely a market yeah. for your launch. I mean, for this Under Armour, great stuff. It's made for sweating. I mean, a lot of synthetic materials that you put into this underwear. It's going to help with the moisture wicking aspect to work out all of those great things. But that's what it is. It's synthetic. It's not breathable. It's not organic. It's not. I mean, our product is... I don't want to like plug myself here, but it's 95% bamboo, mm-hmm. which is very good for you. I mean, I love it. I wanted something that just felt really good wearing. And I think bamboo, does that. bamboo have some innate hypoallergenic properties? Yeah, it does. So it doesn't, it naturally doesn't use any pesticides to grow. So that's why it's the most renewable resource on mm-hmm. the planet because it is, you know, it doesn't use that much water. It doesn't have any problems with pesticides or anything like that. It's naturally antibacterial. So that, you know, transfers. I want to be an influencer for Yo, this. Go for it. I want to yeah, try them go. out. I'll, I'll give you a real out. testimonial. Yo, I, I'm starting a business. It's aloe vera boxer briefs. Okay. Right? So, it, it, first of all, aloe vera soothes the skin. Yeah. Okay? Second of all, it feels amazing. Uh-huh. And it's the best lotion to use. I didn't know you could make fabric out of lotion. Mm-hmm. Ooh, you can't. Oh, I didn't you know can't. you could make boxer briefs out of bamboo, but you did it, right? <laughs> right. So don't tell me what I can't do. I didn't okay? say you couldn't do it. I uh, said I didn't know you could do yeah, it. Yeah, I'd love to see Toronto, it. They can do everything. Toronto. Let's get into um. Let's get to, get to know you guys a little better. Okay. And, and the way we do that is we play a game called either or. Now, either or, we give you two suggestions. You pick one or the other. 
Uh, you, we try to. You're strongly encouraged. You're not encouraged. Forced you're not forced. We don't like to force women to do anything. We don't do that against here. their will unless we have a safe word. So what we're <laughs> going to do is we pick one or the other, and then we may or may not interpret your answers, yeah. mm. and we may analyze you in our own way. George, bring it. So cash or credit? Mm. Credit. 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 Yeah. Wow. Credit. Wow. Um, now. Now, what we didn't tell you is part of this game, we psychoanalyze you based on your answer. We saw, kind of said that. So, um, <laughs> Persians, both of you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe that um, with a Persian girl, okay, you, you, can never, you can never have enough because they are so extraordinary. There are very few of them glo globally, as Saran informed me. And the problem with cash, a Persian, you might run out. And credit, you could get an unlimited line if you know mm. the right Persians. And that represents your affinity for infinity. Both of you have a need, explorative minds. You as a business owner and you as a therapist to not just stop at what's ahead of you, wow. to keep going. Strong. And you've taken your personal careers to the next level. Mm -hmm. And that's why you picked credit. Strong. It's indicative of wanting to do more. Not just for yourselves, though. For others. That's great. Did you hey, just you come up what? with that? Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's great, right? That's great. Yeah. Yeah, daddy's money. And hear me, hear me <laughs> out, right? So credit means they just had dad. Do y'all both have families that are well off? Well off families? No, no, be honest. Don't look at each other. You know if you're- We're fortunate. You're fortunate? We're you're fortunate? Yes, we're really? Blessed. Because wasn't I on your dad's yacht one time? Okay, so no, let, me explain, it, some, let me explain that. something to you, okay? I, don't I heard about you. the yacht. I, don't want to talk I heard about the yacht. Oh, yeah. Actually, you, the fact that you have friends Thank that have you. yachts, okay? I saw yachts a little Instagram of, story of the yacht. Yeah, when you're hanging out. Exactly. Yeah. So, so yachts, right? So don't, yachts. Don't okay. deny the yacht. So Be when proud you like the, the credit, it's because you're you're used to a certain lifestyle. And here's the thing, and, and it might even come up. People people also don't realize this a lot of times because people, unfortunately, especially when it comes to a certain class of women, they they look at these girls and they're like, oh, they're gold diggers. And it's like, no, if you're accustomed to a certain lifestyle, why would you want to move mm -hmm. down? Why would anyone yeah. want to move down mm -hmm. from lifestyle? You know what I'm saying? Like even something as simple as me. Like living in West Hollywood, nigga, I'm not moving to NoHo. Like that's just not, you know. You I'm know, gonna do whatever I can to stay. Back where I'm at. in my broke days, I felt I was a little judgier. I, I viewed that as materialism. Mm -hmm. But then I got a car with leather seats. I got a rental without le leather seats and without the cooling system on my back. And I said, you know what? I've been exposed to much greater. I want my leather seats and I want my cool. That's system. it. And now you have it's to have It's not so it. bad to want a nice It's what want you want nice to have. Things. So credit. And also, I would say credit also establishes that both of you have a sense of loyalty and, and, and also are able to be goal-oriented mm -hmm. towards something. And that, that's a big thing, too. Cash is because, you know, I just like cash, like money. Like I need to be, it needs to be real. Falling in love with ideas, both of you, good for you. You know what I'm saying? All right, Teron, what's your either or, my Strawberry brother? or banana? Ooh, that's oh. tough. Strawberries that's... or I know where bananas. he's going with this. You we don't know do. where I'm going. You're just asking. You're, you're presuming. Strawberry. <laughs> strawberry? Okay, yeah, definitely. I <laughs> about know, strawberry. It depends what mood I'm in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What mood? <laughs> I don't know. I yeah, mean, right yeah. now, probably a strawberry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. strawberry. George? Strawberries. Now, the strawberry, although the taste of the strawberry is sweet, the berry sector of fruits actually has healthier and, and less sugars mm. than the other fruits. Mm. Megan's an excellent okay. cook, actually. Oh, she I believe is. that. She's a food Thank connoisseur. You. She is a food connoisseur. So, yeah. so with that being said, yeah. that was actually a, a highly selective answer, mm. meaning that both of you are highly aware, highly alert people. That's you know what's good for you, but you also have taste. And anyone in the wrong, anyone in the right state of mind would never say that a banana tastes better than a strawberry because it just simply doesn't. You have a fine taste, and you are selective. You are selective. You screen your friends who are around you. You don't just hang out with trash. You don't let negative energy come into your lives. Yeah. And you reflect. You believe that your friends and your partners are a reflection of you. So you seek refinement, which is why you like my cologne and didn't like Tehran's bathrobe. Wrong. Do you say this on dates with girls? No. It's so funny. You I may it. have had a conversation with your sister, yeah. but I didn't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, here, yeah. So, I, like I said, Negan's a food connoisseur. Okay. They both chose strawberries. 
lesbians. And here's the thing about that, right? Like, it's just, it's okay. Come like, on. you can oh pick you can sexual choose. orientation Yo, based on. Fruit I didn't say selection. their sexual orientation. I, I'm just saying here. Here's well, the, my here's favorite fruit is passion fruit. What does that have to do with my sexual orientation? <laughs> uh, so here's the thing. When when I said that, I actually meant in the concept of you prefer sensuality over sexuality. You guys have uh, uh, an ornate creative minds that play an aptitude for bigger and better things. That's where strawberries play because it takes, it takes more refinement to eat a strawberry than a banana. Bananas are actually the clear, more logical choice. They're a little more bland, but they're more useful. They're protein. They're nature's natural uh, snack to go, right? But here you are. You're like, I like to take my time. You guys are take my time people. You like the finer things in life. So combined with the credit, I just can't afford either one of you. That's what it really comes down to. Like I can't afford y'all. Yeah. All right, George. Um, I like my... how you're jumping to a lot of conclusions. Yeah, right conclude. I can it. afford you. What's up? <laughs> What's up, Sarah? Just my saying. question. I can afford you. What's up, Sarah? <laughs> my question today was you like bathrobes. Right, was we'll talk later. Afghan men or Indian men? But Tehran alerted me that I used that on a previous episode, so I'm not going to say that question today. The question today is cactus, cacti, or roses? Oh, roses, 100%. Yeah, I have a really soft my favorite. spot for roses. They're my favorite as well. And um, my psychoanalyzation, um, besides Tron giving me a mean mug for my previous question, is the following, that basically you're, you like romance. You like romance. You don't discredit romance. If you are dating someone, that's, it's important for them to be romantic and chivalrous. Because you have a lot of self-value and you want that reciprocated. And just a quick fling or sex doesn't cover all of it. Sex is short, it's great, but the romantic element shows a greater level of appreciation and intellectual stimulation as well as somewhat of a spiritual stimulation. And that's why you pick the roses. And you don't want to get stabbed by pricks, a.k.a. cacti, a.k.a. a metaphor for men in L.A. Thank you. Yeah, follow that, Teron. Follow that one. Without using any of the words I said. <laughs> Lesbians. And here's the thing about that, right? Like, <laughs> when, I, when I go through this, it's just the concept of you guys like these, these men who, who are a little more sensitive and caring and emotional and huggy and, and, and you're a little needy. And, and it's fine. You know what I'm saying? The guy who shows up with roses... That's not, that's not the guy that gets shit done. I just want to let you no, know that, don't right? Show up with roses. No, don't show up with roses because that's actually an awkward thing. Or a though. cactus. Mm, <laughs> you know, sometimes I want to throw a cactus at your happen? face. Like, do people actually show like up? Like a to... nice succulent, I wouldn't mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a nice what? Succulent? Yeah, we can talk about that after the show. <laughs> okay, so what's the crush this week, Toronto? The crush this week is we oh pick a crush God. each and every week that taught kind of tells us a little about the type of person that you like and we we specify the crush this week's crush is genius crushes people who you or people would think of as a genius that you have a crush on anywhere from a philosopher to a modern day to a doctor artist. to anything anyone that's considered a genius hmm. has to be alive uh, no uh, alive or dead any genius that are alive any jesus any genius that has existed it could be a family member who knows that's a hard question. I mean, I know, who my, I know who my favorite genius Mozart. is. Mozart. Yours? Yeah. Mine is Ellen. Ellen? Ellen. Degenerous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love her. Um, and she's a genius. I just said Mozart. Mine's actually just me. I didn't want to, I didn't want to throw that, but mine's really genius. just me. Like, I'm my own favorite genius of all time. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah. I feel like the therapist has to say Freud. I really like Freud. He's You're a Freud? Freud who was basically wrong about every assumption. Well, I don't think so. he was the so. person that first pioneered a lot Everyone of main thinks concepts. So. so it's not my opinion. No, but a lot of people went off him. Phil Knight, the creator of Nike. Mm, Phil yeah. Knight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's great. I'm re I just finished his book, Shoe Dog. So yeah, that was a great, that. it's a great book. And he just kind of keeps me reminded that, you know, in business, things get tough and it's not all glorious and fun and games and stuff. And I just, I love that. I love the, the peaks and the valleys of his journey. And it makes, it just reminds me that, there's going to be a lot of those. hundred percent. And sometimes you just pay the person who created the swish only $30 and keep moving. Exactly. Right. That just happens. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great yeah. Phil Knight. <laughs> Phil Knight is, uh, I don't, I don't know what's going on with Nike in the, in the next couple months, but Phil Knight is definitely a business mogul. That's, a, that's an amazing 
concept for both of you to have these genius crushes. I'm glad we were able to do that. We also pick a pop it or stop in, and a pop it or stop in is a trend that men do, and we want to know your opinion on it. A popular what? Popping or stopping. Popping or stopping. Popping pop pop means awesome, guys. Keep doing it. Stopping means it needed to end yesterday. <laughs> okay. And our popping or stopping trend that men do are plaid. Pants. Have you guys seen these? They're yes. the little red plaid pants or the beige ones. They walk around. It's or like the blue. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's just plaid. It's it's kind of like a plaid shirt, except now you're wearing it, pants. wearing it as pants. What do you guys think? Depends. I think pop in if you have the style, but like it wouldn't go well with like a bathrobe. I feel like you have to like <laughs> dress it up, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the shade. <laughs> Yeah, but you it, know what? It's cooler in the shade. It, so I don't yeah, mind. It. It's cooler in the shade. I don't you know, mind. You know what? It was fun at first, but yeah. now I feel you're attacking my friend. Yeah, thank you, George. <laughs> you know what I mean? You feel, you feel the tension? it's okay for him. No. You feel the tension? All right. When have I ever attacked you? I was giving you a compliment. Oh, yes. Being a lespian is a compliment. So we, if I was a woman, I would never like men. So we got to pop in as long as it's not with the yes. bathroom. Sarah, pop in or stop in plaid pop pants. In. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Pop in, you're feeling the vibes. I'm you feeling. like plaid pants? Right now, I do. Okay. If it's done right, yeah. I mean, you kind of have to have the style for it, the yeah. person. I mean, don't just... And I actually you know, want to... That just means they like white guys, bro. Just to let you know. I've seen a lot of you, black no. guys oh, wearing... No, You've on. seen an Asian guy just pull off black pants. I've seen Maybe seen not an Asian, Asian I've seen a black guy wearing it. I have. Yeah. I've seen yeah. Asian, I've seen black, I've seen... Yeah. What's his white. name? I want to know this guy. What's, What's his, his name? name? Yeah. I've seen actually a few. A few? A few of my dance friends wear just Yeah. Exactly. Dance. Exactly. My only issue with them is that I got, I'm a little curvy. I got thicker legs. So I noticed with the plaid pants, they're like ultra skinny fit. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I'd be able to fit them, but I am intrigued by them. And uh, you know what? Thanks to your advice, both of you, I'm going to order some on Amazon. Yes, for sure. Absolutely. Good idea. Go for it. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah, I hope you wear those plaid pants with pride. George. I will. Lots I of pride. Throwing. Lots of pride. Um, <laughs> each and every week, we get a question from a listener, and they submit it. Email us. We love getting your questions. Email us your questions at imperfectgshow at gmail.com. And this week's <laughs> email question comes from Stormy D for Daniels. All right. Stormy D for Daniels wants to know, listen to you guys often, and I love the show. Oh, thank you. How do I know if I should shoot my shot? I'm interested in getting to know this guy, and I'm not sure if he's just being nice or if he's possibly interested as well. Should I just wait for him to make a move? If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, then it just doesn't. I don't trust my instincts when it comes to situations like these. I don't mind letting someone know I'm interested. However, I'm unsure if he would think it's an aggressive move or not. Over 7 billion people in the world and I seem to be fixated on this one dude. Help? Oh, gosh. Always, always, always shoot your shot. That is the surefire way to get your answer as soon as possible. I honestly think, I don't think there's anything wrong with being aggressive and showing what you want ever. Mm -hmm. I think she should go for it. What does she have to lose? Just see what's up. All right. To play devil's advocate here, all right? I'm sometimes scared to shoot my shot because, like most Americans, <laughs> Bitch. I... <laughs> I want to let you know, guys have to deal with this on a daily, daily basis. So yeah. when girls are like, yo, shoot your shot, when you say shoot your shot, is this gender neutral? And, and you know what? How else How else do we shoot the shot? They're nodding their heads yes, because yes. I, I don't think they understand the concept of the show. <laughs> but, so, yes, yes. So, so guys should do the same? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, rejection sucks. It's, it's the same. It triggers the same response as physical pain in your body. So it's like... I mean, you well, got that's it. deep. Can you say that again it's, for the It's listeners? the same. It works the same mechanism. But I'm saying, like, I think that you you have nothing to lose. You should go out there, put yourself out there, see what's up. It triggers a physical pain. Yeah. And I, I have a know. question for you guys. I mean, what's the difference between shooting your shot now and shooting it a week, two weeks? The difference month? is, here's the difference. It's it's This is how I see it, right? You go up and someone's in the middle of something. They're talking to someone and you want to go shake their hand. And it's almost like too soon you're interrupting. As with your clients, before I shoot my shot, if I'm interested in someone, I want to kind of show a little bit of my personality, get to know them a little more prior to just saying, hey, yo, let me get your number, girl, because why do I want your number? You know, I, I haven't even spoke to you yet. And I, maybe I do overanalyze that because that prevents me a lot from initiating conversations. I think there's a fine balance between it. I'm not saying shoot your shot before you even talk to this person. I mean, you definitely have to establish a relationship, but don't let it keep you from doing what you want to do. Is that yeah. all I'm saying? Yeah. 
And don't let that uncertainty keep you from doing that. Because I think yeah. Tur- you know, Tron, do you struggle with the same anxiety? No, I shoot my shot. My shit be sweaty like I'm Shaq, bro. <laughs> like I'm shooting shots. Here, here's the thing, right? Here, oh here's goodness. the thing about shooting your shot, right? Uh, I, I think it's, it might be a little different for girls and guys because guys, I think we get a lot more practice at it. We get a lot more practice at being rejected, and uh, unfortunately, some guys are not good at taking rejection. That's why you get the fuck you, bitch. Like, yo, you're a horrible person. Who 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 raised you, right? But the concept is women aren't the ones who are often needed to shoot their shot. Usually guys come off as the hunter. And so you say that, but I've been at many bars and girls don't really come. I don't see the statistically girls coming up like, hey, man. Hey, what's your name? John? Oh, that's so nice. You want a drink? I haven't really seen that too often, even with all the credit they seem to have. Well, I feel like now people should be way more open to it, especially in an era where we're on dating apps and all of this stuff is happening on your phone. Sure, we have those connecting. where the where the uh, the woman chooses the man yeah. as opposed to. Yeah, but I'm saying that's swipe so right, much more left. of an opportunity to go in like to a bar or a restaurant and really make an effort of like, if that's what you like. You have nothing to lose. Go talk to that person, you know? So let me ask you what both of you prefer. You meet a guy, you start as friends, and you might be interested. Do you? Does that guy have a window for when he needs to shoot a shot with you? Ooh. It depends. Question is, it depends. What, what does it depend on? Yeah, what, it, does it, what does it depend on? It depends, like, what's going on in that window. Like, yeah. is he making an effort? Are you connecting? Is making plans or blowing you off or I just feel like it, it all, it's all depends. where it's like I am in my life what yeah. I want in that moment you know it might not be the best time or yeah. anything like that I mean there's a lot yeah. that goes into it Do you but feel- I think if it's really yeah. I mean if it's really meant to be and that's something that it's gonna be something that's gonna yield something greater I think in most situations it sh- there shouldn't be a window it'll just happen so yeah. who's responsible in this situation for shooting the shot Back to Tehran's initial question. Both parties. Both Both parties. parties? So have you you hit on a guy? Yeah, absolutely. What did you do? What did I do? Yeah. I mean, in (laughs) like what sense am I going to... So what did you do How did you approach How did you approach the guy? Start a conversation. You just went up to him and you were like, hey, what's your name? Yeah. What do you do? Did you tell him you're interested? I've sent my number to somebody I thought was cute. You sent your number? Yeah, I like on a piece of paper and sent it over. That's inappropriate. That's, 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 a, bit, that's a bit aggressive. That's a bit no, aggressive. I think it's assertive. It's like mm-hmm. that's cute. I, thought, I love love letters. I would yeah. love to receive a note with a handwritten. Would you actually though? Would you want a girl who pursues you? That's a good. That's a solid Ooh, question. Uh, Pursue that's is different than question. opening a window I, of opportunity. See, when yeah. girls open windows, they just think, "Oh, I smiled." Like, I no, do, but that that's look, very different than uh, sending your number. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I do like it because it just. For me, my personal uh, hold case, on one second. I'm so sorry. I have an anxiety. So you just sent your number? <laughs> oh gosh, I okay. did this to right. myself. Okay. I, because of my anxiety, my fear of rejection, yeah, it does make it more uh, relieving for me when mm-hmm. the woman shoots her shot. Mm-hmm. At the same time, I think anyone, any human being, it's not a guy or girl thing. We all talk about the chase. Mm-hmm. There's a little piece of everyone that enjoys the chase, the, the pursuit of something you want. Mm-hmm. So. It could it could work either way for me, to yeah. be honest. I don't think I would be completely turned off if a woman sh- sh- yeah. you know, shot her shot with me. I admire that, I think. And I'm, and oh, thank man, you. And what, I just am both. I think it's it's cool. Yeah. It shows confidence. It takes, shows a level of, takes a level of confidence, for mm-hmm. sure. To shoot your shot? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but also, I don't like when people just shoot their shot all the time. Like... Well, yeah. You sent your number to one guy, but has it been a hundred? No, I've never done that. It was one time. That was a one time. Because I was like, I have, what do I have to lose? That guy must have been know. really special. Yeah, because I, some... I want to see That's this guy. It. What do you have to Instagram. lose? Instagram. Good, solid point by Tehran. Some guys are just like shooting their they just shot. Shoot shots. Yeah. The guy at the end of the club that's like, hey, what's your name? Hey, what's your name? Hey, and you can there's tell. There's a telemarketer. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell what. <laughs> and those those know. guys just need to chill because yeah. it's those guys who basically build up to my anxiety because now I'm scared 
that women are just so traumatized from guys yelling at them outside the club all the time mm-hmm. that I'm fearful to, to be marked as the same. No, but do you know who you are? You know who yeah. you are, and you yeah. know how to approach the situation. Just as Negi, Negi knows who she is. She's not giving her business card out to anyone. So when she does that, it does mean a little bit of something. So I need to find my confidence. Yeah, you need to find your confidence. Find and we can swag. tell, like, if someone does that often, or if you know, we it, we can tell it comes off. Huh. You know, I like I like these guys. Am I helping so with you? No, I'm getting real. Right? I'm getting therapy. That's why we oh. like getting, and especially, see, here's the thing about Negan. Negan's actually a very, very good uh, therapist. She gets a variety of people that come to visit her, Thank and especially you. when it comes to relationships, she is, you know, a, a, not only a natural counselor, but a trained and trained and accredited, where I remember when you were getting your accreditations, and it was very impressive, and you were... Uh, top Thank of your you. class and everything, and now you have the real world experience as well. Thank you. Question to you is: Are you in a relationship yourself? And has <laughs> being in a relationship <laughs> has being in a relationship look like? Do you use your therapy methods in your own relationships? Um, I remember in grad school I would do that. I would like learn something and take it home and like start analyzing my relationship. Oh god! But no, I think I'm. A, Within the last year, I'm a lot more like trusting of myself and go with the flow when it comes to relationships. Just like you leave your work at work, you know, it but definitely helps having the skills. It's but I don't. Kind of, it's kind of like so. Tehran and I host this after show for the show called Roswell, New Mexico. Check mm-hmm. it out on After Buzz. Okay. So the concept on the show is there are these aliens and they're living amongst humans, and they have to almost hide their superpowers so they could blend in. Mm-hmm. But you see a level of frustration. Do you having these superpowers feel frustrated if you're not using them and if you're holding back your knowledge in a relationship? No, I think it it depends on the partner. Like mm-hmm. if that person is open to communication and talking about it, I'm a very I'm a talker. Like I want to be like, okay, this is bothering me. Can we talk about it? And not everybody is responsive to that. Everyone has their own love mm-hmm. language and the way they respond. But um yeah, definitely I'm like, let's process this, let's talk about it. But I'm not like sitting there analyzing and he should do this or this means this. No, I don't. I got you. Yeah. Sarah. <laughs> Remind me of the Do you question. use therapy methods when you're dating? <laughs> the same ones you've used on me today. The same ones I've used I on Because I found what you said comforting. You're like, oh. are, is that person <laughs> you? Comforting. And it's not. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do. I'm, I'm, I like to think I'm an over-communicator, which can be a problem at times. And like Nagin, I mean, people have their own different ways of expressing mm-hmm. love and affection and what they like. And so, I mean, yeah, I have my principles and I stick to them. I obviously am not a therapist, so I don't, you know, overanalyze as much as I'd like to. But, um, yeah, I have my rules and I kind of stick to them. Oh, she's that's... comforted me before. I like, she's, she's really good at it. You know, here's the thing. Like, every girl I've ever talked to has been amazing. So... It's like all of them and none of them at the same time, right? Like I, I've, t- it's, it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm clearly I'm the problem. Like it's not, it's not every. It just my life would have been ended up somewhere different, right? And I, I like where my life is, right? So it just would have been I could have talked, I could have ended up with anyone, and I would have went there because I don't shoot my shot like a telemarketer. I'm very particular. So I, I take high percentage shots. And do you prioritize your life direction more so than those people? You know, yeah. I respect Yeah, I do. This is my movie. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm right. the star. I'm never going to cut myself from my own movie. And, uh, you might get lucky and become a co-star. You know what I'm saying? You might get some co-star credit. I don't know about production, but you're, you're not directing it. You can get a co-star, but it's my movie. Like I've been, here, this is something I'm, I'm very upfront about with. I've been doing this or I've been doing me way longer than I've known you. And especially about moving to LA, I didn't move to LA to date you. That's not why I'm here. I didn't come here to date you. So anytime, if I have, if I have shows, uh, if I have shows and a girl's like, oh, you have another show tonight? Oh, I can't believe, then you're not the one for me. Right. You should want me to have so many shows you've never seen me. Like right. that's what an inevitably the goal of success is, right? So I, I would be like, Negi, I wish you had so many high profile clients that you were just so busy every day. You know, Sarah, I, I wish you sold so much bamboo <laughs> underwear that gorillas were just eating <laughs> your underwear in do Africa. Gorillas because eat you, bamboo? Yes, they do. So, gorillas? Yeah, silverback gorillas. I got to fact check that. Pandas. Silverback Pandas. gorillas. Pandas. Silverback gorillas, bamboo grass, and ants. 
They they have a uh, and berries. Cool question from our listener. I just popped up. Teron, have you ever been rejected before? Rejected? <laughs> yeah. Have I been rejected by a girl? Yeah. 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 Of course. Every, I, I don't think there's a guy alive that's been rejected by a girl. And, and in fact, everyone feels like their rejection was the worst. Even though, trust me, when you when you stack it up against other people's rejections, you'll realize, yo, sometimes you win, sometimes you win. Sometimes the shot goes in, sometimes it doesn't. And it does suck when you get rejected, and especially in certain ways. Getting ghosted, I think, is the worst. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like if someone just ghosts you. Oh yeah, that's. You know, terrible. like ghosting is the worst. Uh, if someone's more upfront, at least you know upfront. Yeah. But it's sometimes it's people hurts. are nice, and as guys, we unfortunately are programmed to think nice and flirting are basically the same thing, and they're really not. And so it's it's interesting to decipher that and take that for yourself. So yeah, yeah, I've been rejected. Sheesh, it hurts, doesn't man. It? I'll be all right. I'm Yo, here for a hug. If you niggas get shot in the hood every day, B. <laughs> you be really all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all I want. He, listen, he gets a hug on his freaking birthday. Is it October? Is it October? He, no. He gave me a half hug. And by the way, my birthday's in September in Toronto. <laughs> oh my God. Whatever, bro. You don't know his birthday? Jeez. Whatever. Oh, my God. Close enough. The point is this. You still mad because I pat you on the back? <laughs> yeah, hug, it's bro? like the most. Okay. Like, get over it, my dude. Insincere. Like, oh, yeah. Hey. Yo. Okay. You be all right. So we do pick a topic and we do want to talk about this. Uh, and also with, as it goes with everything, we do take our topics directly from all of you. So we appreciate you for sending in your topics and letting us know what you think. This week's topic uh, is from, in light of several celebrity relationships coming to the forefront of borderline abuse, the question is how much should you care about your significant other? What is the line between caring about someone and monitoring them? Wow. So I, I think there is a question where people tend to care too much and it seems to be like almost an investigation all the time or you feel like uh, parents can even do this. So therapist Negin. Well, I, by the way, I'm not like giving any therapy advice for our listeners, but um, I don't know. Sarah, you answer first. This is a heavy, heavy question. I mean, I don't know. I think, again, like, the, it depends on the person. It depends on the person receiving that care. Um, for me, I think actions show a lot more than words and checking in and all of those mm -hmm. things. I mean, I think everybody is their own individual, and I think people should respect that. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I look for in a yeah. person. And I think if you are letting that person ride and be their own individual, and as long as you're not getting in the way of that or you know, holding them back from anything. Mm -hmm. There are so many different ways that you can show that you care and you love them yeah. without being overbearing or being yeah. in any of those cases. Yeah. Do you feel like people are overbearing? Like what, what are signs of overbearingness to you? Who are you with? Um, what are you like always wanting to know what you're doing? Um, See, I take that differently. And that's oh, okay. why I think like- Cause oh. you think that's caring. No, but it depends on the person. Depends what that person's gone through. And, you know, for some people, it's like, okay, he, he cares about me. He really wants to know what I'm doing. But if that person has been in many relationships where, you know, isn't allowed to talk to people, isn't allowed, whatever it is, that may come off as like, oh, my gosh, I'm being, like, suffocated in this relationship. You oh, know, it's yeah. different. Everybody is different. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a degree. You know, if someone wants to know, like, oh, where are you? I think everything's over, overbearing, right? So if a girl's like, hey, What's up? Yo, what are you, the fucking feds, bitch? <laughs> Get off my back. Come How on. was your day? Yo, are you investigating me for the CIA whore? I just need space, okay? Oh, my goodness. Like, I, I just don't like... <laughs> what are you doing later? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm getting my lawyer. Call my lawyer. I'm done and, with this. And I wish he was just joking, but I've received these messages back I'm, from him. These are actually... When I was saying all these things, it was actually George who was texting me. <laughs> so, so, so we saw this This sign, is so real. The, this is so real. Don't sign, call me just to say hi. The signs of where are are you who are you with that's overbearing for negging maybe depends on the person's situation how do you confront these things when they come up to kind of wrap this up if these issues happen what's the best way to go about it on either side of the coin men or women or women and women and men and men how should they confront their partner talk to them like i said in the beginning have a conversation you know put your defenses down and really be vulnerable and just say like you know, when I receive messages like this, I know it may not be your intention, but this is how I'm feeling. And go based on that. I think that that's being raw and, and vulnerable. 
That's good advice. Sarah, Absolutely. anything yeah. to add to this? Um, I'd say give them a chance. Communicate what you are feeling. Let them adjust. Let them mm. do their thing. And if it is still too much for you. What happens when it you communicate and then the same thing happens? Like everything's good for like a week, two weeks, and then it goes right back to that cycle. I mean, I have a really low patience with people. Yeah. So, I mean, I love being single and just not being tied down to anyone. Yeah. So for me, I would just be like, thanks, but no thanks. I did communicate that to you. You kind of had your shot once, twice, whatever. If it's that's who you are, that is fine. Yeah. That's not who I am, and we're not. Yeah, perfect. no bamboo underwear for you. <laughs> So right. in in essence, if it came down to is there such thing as caring too much, what is your answer? I hate that word like caring too much that, that shouldn't be a bad thing. I think like, no, because I grew up on the care bears, so no. Like if I'm the one constantly putting in more work. If someone just cares, you feel like they care, they're like, well, I care, because there's some people who use care as like a form of guilt where it's like Oh, like how I care about how your day is? You're mad because I care about your day? True. It's like you should trust or respect I, my boundaries. And I think it's not caring too much. It's caring in a, in a different way that's not working for your partnership. Yeah. Then I got to tell my mom we got to break up because when I get sick, she messages me like a thousand times. Oh, no. You say that, but when she was at work and didn't message you, you were like, why didn't she just message me? I'm like, she messaged me. Yeah, because she conditioned me to have that luxury. Oh my and she gosh. just took it away from me. <laughs> well, uh, we appreciate having you guys on the show. Thanks for you having were us. Excellent, excellent. It's good to get advice from experts and an actual expert in the building. Um, where can people find you if you want to be found? Um, my website, therapywithnegin.com. And how do you spell that? N E G E E N. Perfect. Boom. Therapywithnegging.com. Yeah. Sarah, where can people find you and or your bamboo underwear? Yeah. I mean, if you want to find me, it's Sarah, S-A-R-A-Y-O-Z. But more importantly, my bamboo, which is um, B.W.R.C.O. So Beware Co. And then our website is Wear Beware, which is W-E-A-R. B-W-R.com. I'll, be, I'll be checking it out. Definitely got to check it out. I, George, get him some bamboo underwear. Yeah, I need it. He's going to tell me. I'm sure he'll tell me all about it, of course, because that's what he <laughs> likes to do. He overshares <laughs> and overcares. And, of course, each and every week we pitch, pick an imperfect gentleman of the week that embodies the personification and character of an imperfect gentleman. This week's is all the NCAA teams playing their hearts out mm -hmm. in March Madness. They are playing to win. They're not getting paid. And honestly, this they, they give it all to make it and yes. and get that get that Maybe ring the and best get that team cup. Win. So we hope you guys. I, I personally think it's Duke UNC, but we'll see how it goes. Anything can happen. It is March Madness. I am the impeccable, impenetrable Tehran Von Gosper. You can find me at I am Tehran, I A M T E H R A N, all across the board because literally I am Tehran, aka the bathrobe heartthrob in the building, in the flesh. And of course, I'm alongside the very good smelling Mr. George Corey. Find me at Mr. George Corey on the gram. That's what I like to use the most. Tehran, spell my last name. That's K-H-O-U-R-I. I really need to that. get over that fetish. And we are <laughs> Imperfect gentlemen. gentlemen. Remember, nobody's perfect. But, but us. us. <laughs> Guys, we'll see you next week. My man Martin on the boards.